Although clearly not the main focus of the show, Steven Universe still had quite a bit of fight scenes throughout its five main seasons, movie, and epilogue miniseries. Some opponents were strong, while others were almost godly in terms of their abilities. Yet the Crystal Gems always prevailed, and we'd get to see how well these guys could hold their own in a fight with such a wide variety of abilities at their disposal. So in today's video, sort of serving as a follow-up to the last community poll I did, we're going to be ranking all the main Crystal Gems from weakest to strongest. To be clear, this is just everyone who fought against Blue and Yellow Diamond in Season 5, obviously more gems became sort of de facto members later on, but there's simply not enough screen time for me to include all of those guys. Also, no Rose because she's dead. Starting with number nine, weakest spot, I'm gonna put Lion. The thing about Lion is he's kind of serves as the group support class, if that makes sense. He's got a pretty strong roar, can travel very far distances, and has the magical main, which can act as a pocket dimension to store various items inside. He doesn't really do any fighting on his own, and usually just acts as a mount for Connie or Steven so they can move around a battlefield more fluidly. In terms of 1v1 scenarios against other other gems, I can't really see him doing a whole lot on his own. While I don't believe it's ever been explicitly stated anywhere, it feels like Lion doesn't really act on his own unless there's someone else around that he feels like he either needs to take direction from or protect. The Roar is all he really has for dishing out any kind of significant damage. Strong creature, but not on the same level as the rest of these guys in my opinion. I'm going to be giving the number 8 spot to Connie. Connie's obviously come a very long way since her introduction to the series. Initially a bit of a timid bookworm with not too many friends to becoming one of the best sword handlers Steven Universe has ever seen, almost on par with Pearl in terms of skill. The big problem with Connie is she's held back pretty heavily by her human body. A big thing that makes gems so formidable against pretty much any life form that isn't their own kind is shattering them or even poofing them can be extremely difficult depending on what their gemstone is. Connie does not have that same luxury. Her biggest strength, at least when it comes to gem matchups, is some gem powers won't affect her at all, like Blue Diamond Sadness Aura Spread or whatever you want to call it. This has been shown to be intense enough to make gems completely lose their wills to fight for short periods of time but it has zero effect on purebred humans like Connie. Granted, even this immunity is pretty niche because this is only one of Blue Diamond's many powerful attributes. Realistically, what is Connie doing on her own against that, let alone against someone like Jasper or Spinel? Fuck all, that's what. And nothing personal, Connie, we still love you. Number seven's going to Peridot. I was initially contemplating on putting her a bit higher than this spot, but it's one of those things where we don't really know the exact extent of her unique ability Ferrokinesis or the control over metal objects, because on paper, if this ability is pushed far enough, she could be stronger than Eustace Mid over here. But at the very least, she has been shown to lift up to several tons of weight in metal. This power started off small with her only being able to control smaller objects like a tablet, and evolved to the point where she can lift up entire semi-trucks with relative ease. In terms of fighting, I think one of her best feats was being able to poof corrupted Jasper with a metal rod. The thing is, I'm just not sure how well this power would fare against other gems with good combat proficiency. Uh, close quarters combat is something Peridot struggles with heavily, and her ferrokinesis is still relatively new to her arsenal. It'd be a different story if she came right out of the hole with these powers, but being an Era 2 Peridot, she got a bit of an unlucky roll. Even still, just her being a gem with all the extra physical strength, durability, and having a unique ability that's quite powerful easily earns her a spot above Connie in my eyes. Amethyst is getting the number 6 spot. This is where things start to get a bit tricky because some of the back-to-back -back placings are pretty damn close. Amethyst, I'd argue, came the longest way in terms of character growth related to her own physical abilities and learning to love herself despite not being as physically large as other amethysts. But even with her small size, she's still incredibly gifted in terms of fighting prowess. Her bread and butter in a fight comes down to using her multi-spiked whip with very high proficiency and spin dashing like our favorite blue friend towards enemies. Depending on the opponent, either of these moves can poof or seriously injure someone with relative ease. But what I like about amethyst is how she'll add a lot more flavor to these basic attacks to not only make them stronger, but generally harder to counter. Like lighting the spikes on her whip on fire with violet flame flames to increase the damage output. If we were to follow the laws of science here, this would mean the flames on Amethyst's whip could be burning as hot or even hotter than 3000 degrees Fahrenheit. Plus in her fight against Jasper, she combined these flames with her spin dash attack to unleash a massive attack that generated a giant explosion. Sure, it didn't do much to Jasper, but we gotta keep in mind this Jasper we know is considered the top of her cut. Potentially the strongest Jasper out there with having such a perfect exit hole and giving every crystal gem that's faced her a tough time at one point or another. Amethyst's physical strength is also quite high just like other quartz soldiers. A notable instance being when she poofed corrupted Biggs Jasper by herself. That took a lot of energy, but she still got it done. I love this chaotic little gremlin. Number five is going to Pearl. Like I mentioned earlier about things getting tricky, this is what I mean. She and Amethyst are practically neck and neck in terms of strength. In some ways, I could see why some folks would believe Amethyst should be higher. The thing is, when it comes to actual on-screen feats and getting things done, it feels like Pearl has a bit more to show than Amethyst does. The one time Amethyst and Pearl seriously fought on screen back in season one, Pearl didn't really seem to be struggling too hard. Combine that with the fact that 
she was fighting entirely defensively since she knew what Amethyst was going through, and Amethyst in the moment fighting purely out of rage with what felt like a very strong intent to poof Pearl, yet Pearl was still able to get the best of her. And even within the show's story, it kind of makes sense Pearl should be stronger, not even because Amethyst is a smaller quartz. I'm more so basing this around Pearl having a lot more experience in a fight and on a battlefield than Amethyst had. Pearl was one of the two original crystal gems alongside Rose. Her sword and her spear proficiency are some of the best the series has seen. Her spear in particular being able to shoot blasts of energy to help make up for the lack of range from the main weapon. Her durability is also pretty absurd, one of the most notable instances of this being when Pearl tanked several hits from Sugalite, the fusion between Garnet and Amethyst, and never poofing once during the whole scuffle. Took some damage, sure, but still got the best of Sugalite. Although she wasn't able to do it directly with her spear, she was smart enough to use the environment to her advantage, causing Sugalite to lose her footing and take herself out with her own weapon in the end. That's something I really appreciate about Steven Universe in general. It's how it handles the concept of strength and how it applies to not just physical, but mental strength as well. Meaning, just because you hit super hard, it doesn't automatically make you the strongest there is. But there can still be some exceptions. Like Bismuth taking fourth place on this ranking. Bismuth is more than likely the most skilled at using weapons in her fighting style out of all the crystal gems, which totally makes sense because she's not only a blacksmith, but is known to shapeshift her hands into different weapons like hammers or axes, both of which can stretch farther distances than her normal wingspan and have a lot of destructive power to boot. Her physical strength is about on par, if not greater, than the average court soldier, almost rivaling Garnet's. This was shown in detail when she had to hold back Biggs Jasper from attacking Steven. It didn't look like she was struggling much to do this either. If anything, she was in a worse mental state than normal for a typical fight because she just realized what had happened to the rest of her crystal gem comrades. Her resistance to other serious dangers seemed to be unique to her as well, like casually showering in molten hot lava and not even feeling any kind of pain or sustaining any injuries from it. In a lot of ways, she's similar to Pearl when it comes to how she uses weapons to fight. However, because Bismuth has the physical strength advantage, arguably better durability, and more technique with handling various weapons, she gets the slight edge over Pearl here. If the show decided to make Bismuth unhinged enough to successfully use the breaking point on another gem and continue to keep it as part of her main arsenal, she'd be in the top three. The de facto crystal gem leader, Garnet, definitely earns her third place spot. The whole stronger than you sequence is still one of the best moments in all of Steven Universe, not only from a narrative perspective, but the fight choreography as well. Goes to show just how ahead Garnet is compared to Amethyst, Pearl, and Steven at the time. She was the only one on that side with the ability to take down Jasper, and she more or less succeeded in doing this. While this fight probably does the best at showcasing her abilities, there's still been other instances throughout different seasons to show just how strong she can be. The episode The Message shows us she's got at least some light electrokinetic power since she was able to charge Greg's van just by holding two jumper cables. She was also completely immune to Peridot's electric shocks from her limb enhancers. But her gauntlets are definitely the go-to weapon she uses to fight. These gauntlets, like Pearl Spear and Amethyst Whip, are incredibly versatile. They can create shock waves, act as a shield, and fire off her hands like rockets, which will create large explosions around foes in the distance. Very few gems have been able to deal with the power of these gauntlets. Another unique ability of Garnet's is, of course, her signature future vision, though the way her future vision works doesn't really seem to be that useful in a fight, but I still wanted to mention it, because her kind is more centered around seeing multiple outcomes where one of those will happen, whereas in a fight where someone could always be coming at you, it won't really serve much of a purpose. Also wanted to give quick honorable mentions to Ruby and Sapphire, because they are technically part of the Crystal Gems as well. Individually, these two aren't that strong. Ruby soldiers are ranked pretty low in the gem hierarchy strength-wise, and Sapphire does have future vision of her own, but it's only effective on futures that she has no connection to, which in turn wouldn't help in a fight. Ruby's light pyrokinesis and Sapphire's cryokinesis are still quite impressive, though. If I were to give them placings, then they'd go above Lion, but probably below Connie. Ruby also having a slight edge over Sapphire, since she's been more used to fighting throughout her life before becoming Garnet than Sapphire was used to fighting. Lapis has to be number two, no doubt in my mind. This bitch is so hilariously broken, it's insane. Other than the diamonds, no other main gem in the series has been able to compete with Lapis in a fight. She took on Garnet, Pearl, and Amethyst by herself, all the while her gem was cracked. Constantly kept Jasper under control while they were force-fused into Malachite, and once the two of them reunited, Lapis used an ocean punch to send her hundreds of miles away from she and Steven. Her hydrokinesis is so strong that she was able to lift the entire Earth's ocean from out of the planet's atmosphere in an attempt to make it closer to homeworld with no working wings. She can also create water clones that are sentient enough and strong enough to take on the creatures they're cloned after. These clones are the main things that she used against the Crystal Gems in the Ocean Gem episode. She'll also use water chains to hold her opponents down. These chains were strong enough to hold down Blue Diamond for a decent period of time before eventually breaking free. She's also one of the only gems we've seen be almost entirely immune to Blue Diamond's power, albeit it's kind of fucked up how this is a thing because of all the horrible things she's been through, but still. This Lapis seems to be stronger than the average Lapis, just like the main Jasper is stronger than the average Jasper. In the future episode, Why So Blue, she was able to overpower two other Lapis before Steven had to calm her down. This power had to have been based off the Ochi 
see how Susano's, right? Mighty, I'm scared. These guys were also quite strong themselves, easily carving that weird planet surface with intense streams of water. I don't think anyone would disagree with me putting Lapis this high. She's completely insane. It's honestly one of those things where I feel like if every Lapis decided to become a crystal gem, just those guys probably could have put up a decent fight against all three of the diamonds. I'm so serious. To I'm sure, very little surprise, Steven is number one. Although starting off as a bit of a gem fledgling due to being a gem-human hybrid, as more time passed, Steven was able to unlock more abilities that made him increasingly stronger. Mainly learning that he was a diamond all along, Future in particular brought out the most deadly of these diamond powers, albeit at the cost of Steven's mental state getting so bad that he turned into a corrupted monster that even the three other diamonds couldn't turn back with their powers. It kind of feels like Steven speaks for himself here. Main character, he's gotta be strong as hell in a series like this. But there's one more character that I'm actually having share number one with Steven. Everyone, give it up for Pumpkin! Let's go! The most broken vegetable beach city has ever seen. A uh, co-parter if you don't like that. This is my video. Mine! Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below if there's any other kind of ranking style videos you'd like to see in the future. I'd love to know your thoughts. Huge thanks to my gold tier patrons, Lunar, Izzy Torium, Draconis, and London Morse. You guys' support really means the world to me. And don't be a stranger to leaving a like down below and subscribing for more content like this in the future. But for now, I will see you guys next time. Peace out, take care. Bye-bye.